Hello, and welcome to this film about hydrolysis equations. Um, we're basically going to be writing equations to show how acids and bases behave when you put them in water. Um, and to do this, really, I suppose we're going to need to use quite a lot of the terms that we've covered so far. So uh, just as much as being a, a, an introduction into how to write these equations, this film is also a bit of practice at using some of the terms that we've used up until now, like acids, bases, in terms of bronsted lowry theory, conjugate pairs and what we mean by strong and weak acids. Okay, so let's start off by writing a few of these equations for some strong acids and, um, and we'll see some of the things we need to look out for. Okay, so just to remind you, they are the three strong acids you need to be able to remember in year 11 and 12 by name and formula. So HCl, hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, sulfuric acid and HNO3, nitric acid. Okay, and because they're strong, let's try and remember what that means, okay, this word strong in this context means that they ionize completely. So every single acid molecule that I put into water will turn into ions. So let's write a hydrolysis equation for HCl, okay. Hydrolysis is a reaction with water, so water will always be in these equations, okay. And HCl, as we know, is an acid. You can give H plus to the water. Now, I don't have to write this thing in green. I'm just making it plain, really, that there's an H plus transfer going on. That's why it's an acid-base reaction. The water's accepting the H plus, so it's acting as the base. And we write, we write a one-way arrow here, okay, to show that every single one of these molecules is going to turn into ions over here. What will this form when it loses H plus? Well, it will be Cl, but it will be Cl minus because it's got one less positive charge. And we're also going to form H3O plus because that's what we get if we give an H plus ion to water. Okay, and we've got some conjugate pairs here. Okay, we've got HCl, which is different to Cl minus by one H plus. And this is the thing that can give H plus to turn into the other. So this is the acid and this is the base. So this is the conjugate base of HCl. This is the conjugate acid of the Cl minus ion. Okay, and we've also got this conjugate pair here, water accepting a proton, so acting as a base and turning into this thing, which must be the acid. So here's a conjugate pair. This is the conjugate acid of water. This is the conjugate base of the H3O plus ion. Okay, let's just do that again for one of our other strong acids, nitric acid. Okay, HNO3 plus H2O. Again, we're going to have a one-way arrow because this is strong, so every single one of these molecules is going to turn into ions. We've got a proton transfer, which we don't have to show in our equation, but which I'm doing for the purpose of this film. And we're left with the conjugate base of nitric acid, that's the nitrate ion, and the conjugate acid of water, which is the H3O plus ion. So again, we've got some conjugate pairs here. There's an acid and its conjugate base. Here's another base and its conjugate acid. Okay, so key point really apart from, uh, apart from the actual formulas in the equations, when you're writing an equation for a strong acid, there's going to be a one-way arrow. Okay, we'll move on to the strong bases and we'll do this quite quickly because really there's not a lot of point in writing equations for the hydrolysis of strong bases and we'll see why. This is really the main strong base in the waste course, it's the OH minus ion. And if you think of something that's got OH- in it, let's say sodium hydroxide, and you add that to water, remember this is hydrolysis, so we're adding to water, okay, we're going to have a one-way arrow because it's strong, okay, strong or weak tells you what kind of arrow you've got, okay, this is going to break up into ions, so we're going to have an Na plus ion, and there's going to be an H plus ion transfer, okay, so we're going to get H plus being given from the water, which is now acting as an acid to the OH minus, which is acting as the base. But let's think about what we'll make there. We'll make H2O out of OH minus and H plus. So we'll have H2O here. And we'll also have the conjugate base of water, because this has lost H plus, so we're going to have OH minus. And really, nothing's really happened to the water, you could say. So you could just write, rewrite this equation as NaOH breaking up into Na plus and OH minus, and that's just a simple equation like you see when you show that sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte. But once again, we've got this one-way arrow here, okay, because the thing is strong. 
Okay, but very rare, really, that you see hydrolysis equations with these things because, well, you don't have to put the water in because nothing really happens to it. Okay, we'll move on. We're looking now at weak acids and bases, and we are looking at this from a year 11 perspective that these are the only two that we need to know. We need to know this weak acid, ethanoic acid, and this weak base, ammonia. Okay, if you're in year 12, you might cover a few more of these when you do the organic topic, but for now, you're okay. So let's look at this weak acid first of all. We've got CH3COOH. Okay, and there's only one H plus that can be given away here, not all four, just this one here. So plus H2O, again, we've got this H plus transfer, so it's acid base. Water acting as the acceptor, so it's the base here. And we're going to have a two way arrow now. Now, why do we have this two way arrow? Well, let's first of all write down the formulas of what we form. So there's an ethanoate ion and an H3O plus ion. Okay, there's the conjugate base of this acid, and here's the conjugate acid of this base. Why have the double headed arrow? Well, because this thing is weak, and that means that not very much of it turns into ions. So, in other words, it could form these things, but they can quite easily turn back. Okay, let's do the same thing for ammonia. Now, the difference here is that ammonia is a base, not an acid. So the water is not going to act as a base. It's going to act as an acid. Okay, so the H plus is going the other way. It's going from the water to the ammonia. Okay, and then we're weak again, so a double-headed arrow. Okay, really important point that every time you've got a weak acid or a base, you're going to have a double-headed arrow. And then NH3 plus a proton or plus H plus is NH4 plus, that's the ammonium ion. And H2O minus that ion is OH minus. And you can kind of see how this ties in with what Arrhenius was saying, that there are going to be OH minus ions in solution, even if it doesn't look like there's any there. Okay, so weak acids and weak bases, get the formulas right, of course, for the conjugate pairs, but also make sure you've got a double headed arrow. And the last part of this film is dealing with polyprotic acids. Now, there's two ways of looking at this, and it depends really whether you're in year 11 or year 12 of the waste course. Okay, here are the two polyprotic acids I'm going to look at. They're H2SO4 and H3PO4. First of all, why are they called polyprotic? Well, that's because they've got more than one H plus ion they can give away. Now, the simple way of looking at H2SO4 is to just have it reacting with water and giving away all its H pluses to turn into SO4 2 minus because it's got two of them to give away. And then we'll give two of them to water, but water can only have one, so let's have two waters that will make two H3O plus. Now, the problem with that equation, I suppose, one of the problems is that this is not the conjugate base of this acid. They're not a conjugate pair because they don't differ by 1H+. plus. Okay? But it's still an okay hydrolysis equation to write in year 11. The problem with it is that it seems to suggest that both these H plus ions are strong when they ionize. Okay? But in fact, they're not. So if you're in year 12, or I suppose if you're taking things a little bit more seriously in year 11, then you ought to show this as a two-stage process where H2SO4 reacts with H2O, it gives H plus to H2O. This step is strong, so we'll have a one-way arrow. We're left with the hydrogen sulfate ion and H3O plus, the conjugate pairs of these things, okay? So H plus was given here, one less here and one more there. And then this hydrogen sulfate ion is also acidic. In other words, it can also donate H plus ions. Okay, so that can also hydrolyze, but this stage is actually weak. You don't really have to worry about this too much in year 11. You can just go with the simple one up here. But if you're in year 12, you have to realize that one of these is strong and the other one is weak. Okay, and now you can see that there are conjugate pairs in both the equations. All right, again, we've got transfer protons, and in both of them, the water's acting as the base. Okay. I'm just going to very quickly deal with H3PO4. Um, it's actually weak altogether, so really and truly we ought to show three 
hydrolysis reactions, each of them with a double-headed arrow. I'm not going to go through it very much because we've done it quite a lot now in this film. Okay, that's what we form in the first step. Then this H2PO4 minus is also acidic, so it can give H plus to water. And that's also weak. I'm going to form HPO4 2 minus and H3O plus. And finally, the HPO4 or the hydrogen phosphate ion is also acidic and can give H plus to water. And we'll form finally a phosphate ion and H3O plus. Okay, so that's the polyprotic acids ones with more than one H plus to write. You don't need to know about these in a huge amount of detail in year 11. You need to know what polyprotic means, but you can treat them as quite simple things. Whereas in year 12, you have to realize that, well, most of the polyprotic acids are weak. And even this strong one, sulfuric acid, is only strong in the first stage. And then when it loses its second proton, its second H plus, that's a weak dissociation or weak ionization. Okay, well that's it for hydrolysis equations. Hopefully you have uh, had a good review of conjugate acid-base pairs, of what we mean by strong and weak, and how you represent these things in hydrolysis equations. Any questions, ask as soon as you can, because these problems will only become worse as you move through the topic if you don't get them solved early on.